Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, the best place to be wherever you are on your wealth journey right now. Today I'm going to talk about releasing equity from your own home. Now this is different to what we call an equity release mortgage, sometimes called a lifetime mortgage, and I'm actually going to do a video about those next week, so stay tuned for that. But this week I'm going to talk about taking money out of your own home, whether that's to consolidate some debt or pay for a large item like a holiday or a wedding or something, that's what I'm talking about today. Now obviously lockdown has knocked many of us for six and we may be struggling now with a debt situation maybe or we might have a big payment that we want to make and we might have thought about getting a bank loan or something like that to cover it but because of the ongoing impact of the virus we're unable to do so. So one way you might be able to get around that is to take some money out of your own home. Now I still meet a lot of people that are surprised they can do this. Obviously a lot of people know that to take money out of your own home normally you would sell it and move somewhere smaller and that way you would have some money left over. But what if you didn't want to sell your property? Well if you've ever wondered how your neighbours managed to get the money together for their loft conversion or how your friend's friend managed to save up for their new kitchen, this is probably how they did it. Now there are definitely pros and cons to taking money out of your own home and I'm going to go through those first before I move on to the how-to. Now the biggest pro with taking money out of your own home is that mortgage interest rates are really really low at the moment. In fact they're probably the lowest they've ever been because interest rates are so low. So it's likely that borrowing against your main home is going to be cheaper for you than taking out a bank loan or even maybe a credit card. Before you do that though there are five things that you need to think about. I'm not really going to call them cons because they're not cons, they're just kind of more like hoops that you have to jump through or things that you really want to consider before deciding whether refinancing your own home is the right thing for you to do. So the five things to think about are these. Number one, if you take money out of your own home you will obviously owe more on your mortgage than you did before. Let's say you have a £100,000 mortgage and your house is worth £200,000. Let's say you wanted to release 25,000 from your own home. Once you've done that, obviously you'll now owe your lender 125,000 pounds. And that means your mortgage payments will increase accordingly. And if you're on a repayment mortgage, which is where you're paying the capital and the interest every single month, then it's like a double whammy effect because you're paying more interest on the amount that you've borrowed, but you're also having to pay more to pay it back as well. I would say here that your best course of action is to get yourself a good mortgage broker who can look at your situation and give you some really good proper advice and guidance on how much extra it will cost you per month. Number two, if you're concerned about your payments increasing every month, again have a chat with your mortgage broker because it might be that they can extend the term of your mortgage. Now by the term of the mortgage I mean the original loan term, so it might have been 25 years or something like that. I'm not talking about the two-year fixed rate that you're currently on, I'm talking about the mortgage as a whole. So let's say you increase it, let's say your mortgage is originally 25 years, if you increase that to 28 or maybe even 30 years, that may well wipe out that extra payment. However, obviously the downside to that is that you have to pay your mortgage for longer if you only pay the minimum each month. Number three, your lender will want to know your income and expenses when refinancing your own home as the mortgage is regulated by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority. Whilst a regulated mortgage should give you the comfort and certainty that things are being done properly by both your mortgage broker and your mortgage lender, you still want to make sure that you can afford those monthly payments. Now I'm not currently sure how mortgage lenders are treating people who have been furloughed or who have taken advantage of a SICE grant in the last 12 months but again it's worth a conversation with your mortgage broker to see if anything can be done with your situation. Number four, make sure your credit score is okay. Now your broker will give you some guidance on this but do bear in mind that if you've missed any payments or had any late payments recently then it may well be that your application is declined. Now I have made a video on credit score and how to check it and what to look for and also how to improve it as well so do check that video out I'll pop it just up here for you. Number five the fifth thing to think about when you are refinancing your property and drawing money down is that your lender will almost certainly want to know what you're using the money for. Now there are certain things that they will quite happily allow you to do so it could be a new car it could be a wedding a holiday they like you to be spending on liabilities, okay, so that's a useful thing to bear in mind. Home improvements, so the loft conversion of your neighbours and the kitchen of your friends, that kind of stuff. That's what they like you to be spending your money on. Bear in mind that if the money that you're using is for debt consolidation, quite a few lenders will want to know exactly what debt you have outstanding 
And sometimes they might even want proof that you've paid that debt off once they've given you the loan. So just think about that as well before you go taking money out of your own home. So let's say, for example, that you want to use the money to go on holiday after lockdown finishes, but you've told your lender that the money is for debt reduction. Just bear that in mind. And I will say to you guys with love, please be careful, okay, when you're talking about this. It's always best to err on the side of caution. Tell your broker, tell your lender exactly what you're doing with the money, and then they will be best placed to help you. Okay, so how do we actually go about taking money out of our main home without selling it then? Well, there are two main ways to do this. And first way, number one, I would say definitely speak to your mortgage broker about what we call a further advance. Now, this is where you stay with your existing mortgage lender. So you're not moving away from your existing mortgage. You're keeping all of that exactly as it is. You're just getting a bit of extra borrowing with the same lender. So speak to your mortgage broker and they will make sure that you have equity in your property. Equity on a property is the market value less the mortgage outstanding. So if your house is worth 150,000 in market value and your outstanding mortgage is 100,000, that means that you have 50,000 pounds in equity in the property. That means that if you sold it, providing you've paid all your taxes and bits and pieces, you would probably get your 50,000 out. But if you're refinancing the property and keeping it, you're not going to be able to get the full 50,000 in this example. And that's because you can't get 100% mortgage anymore. Back in the days pre-2008 and the financial crash back then, 100% mortgages were to a penny. You could get lots of them. There were plenty on, in the marketplace. But nowadays, you'd be very, very hard pressed to find one. Instead, the amount you borrow will be based on the loan to value of the property. The loan to value on a property is the amount of loan you have or are getting compared with the value of the property expressed as a percentage. So in our example here, if we have a £150,000 value and a £100,000 mortgage, then our mortgage is two thirds of the whole value, which is 66.66 .66 recurring percent. Now, technically on a main residence, you could borrow up to 90% loan to value. But again, I would double check with your broker to make sure that's the right thing for you to do, because that is quite a high loan to value. So it might be that you don't want to do that. Let's say in this example that you want to refinance at 75% loan to value. Your market value obviously is 150,000 and 75% of that is 112,500. Now, if your existing mortgage is 100,000 pounds, that means that you could borrow up to an extra 12,500 pounds. If you went up to 80% loan to value, for example, that would be borrowing of 120,000 pounds. But because your mortgage is already 100,000, that would mean that you could draw down an additional 20,000 if you wanted to. Now, a further advance with your existing lender should enable you to borrow anything up to 20, £25,000 providing that there's enough equity in your property. So again, speak to your broker before you do it just to make sure there is enough equity. They will be able to guide you and tell you exactly what you'll be able to draw down, how much it's going to cost you extra per month and so on. Thinking about the interest rates on a further advance, sometimes the interest rate might be the same as the mortgage that you're paying at the moment. Sometimes it might be a special rate for further advances specifically with that particular lender or it might be a, at a slightly higher rate, maybe the lender's standard variable rate or something like that. Now I've taken out further advances with all manner of different lenders using all of the above interest rates and it really does vary from lender to lender. So again, speak to your broker about the best thing and the way forward for you. Another thing to bear in mind is that when you're getting a further advance, it may be that either your lender or your broker, or possibly both, will charge you a small fee for that. The second way to release money from your main residence is to remortgage the property. This is for people who want larger sums of money. So let's say, for example, your property is worth half a million pounds and you have an outstanding mortgage of 275,000 pounds, you could potentially borrow an extra £100,000 if you wanted to at 75% loan to value. Obviously, that would be subject to all the things that we've talked about already, like the credit check, making sure you can afford it and so on. Now, the full remortgage process is a lot more of a faff than getting a further advance, I have to say. It involves a whole new mortgage application with a whole new lender. You will need to appoint a solicitor as well to do your conveyancing for you on that. You will also need to get the property valued again and pay a valuation fee for the new lender. There may well also be product fees and things like that attached as well. Remember as well that if you are remortgaging your property in full, make sure that on your current mortgage there are no early repayment charges, otherwise you may have to pay those 
close before you can redeem your existing mortgage, which will be extra costs that you might not be wanting at this time. Actually, while I'm on the subject of early repayment charges, I will say that if you're taking out a further advance for anything up to £25,000 on a property, then because you're using your existing mortgage, nothing there is changing. So you shouldn't have to pay any early repayment charges if you get a further advance on your property. So I hope that all makes sense, guys. So there we are, two ways to take money out of your own home without selling it, which hopefully is very helpful for you if that's something you need to do at the moment or are thinking about doing. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today, guys. Do give me a thumbs up underneath here if you have enjoyed it. Also, let me know in the comments, what would you do with some money that you'd released? Would you pay off your debt with it or maybe go on holiday? What would you do with the money? Let me know in the comments just underneath. Do have a watch of these two videos up next as well because hopefully they will help you with your wealth journey. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet as well. And in the meantime, guys, thanks ever so much for watching this week. Do stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.